11% of the world's population does not have access to clean water. A lot of people think that there's not a lot of water in Africa, but the reality is there's, there's plenty of water, but it's 30, 40, 50 meters below the ground, and so getting to it is the problem. The village drill was a capstone project. The directive from wholives.org was make a machine that will get access to water 250 feet below the surface using primarily human power. There were a number of people who thought it would be impossible. When we first got the assignment, I had never worked on drills before, and so that was kind of daunting. The fact that we were all inexperienced was a blessing, so we could think out of the box. So it started with a drill bit attached to a metal rod. The next was a wooden structure that we took and drilled back behind one of the engineering buildings. We only got you know maybe six inches into the ground, went back to the drawing board. We then drilled a couple feet over near Kiwanis Park. We drilled a, a hole in our professor's backyard. As the development process often is, you learn more and more, little by little, you end up with something pretty successful. And then that's what happened to the village drill. So the final device is a cantilever beam structure. This is our human-powered drill. The yellow wheel acts like a flywheel, which means that once you get it going, it wants to keep going. Through just a lot of hard work and, and quite frankly, inspiration, they came up with the village drill, and th there's just nothing like it in the world. Arriving in Tanzania, it was immediately apparent the need for our project. People had to walk seven miles to get water. Anytime we were operating the drill, there was a crowd around, and they understood what we were doing, and they were excited for it. We'd been drilling at the site for four days. It was hot. We went to disconnect a pipe, and we had water coming out of the pipe. It was a little celebration. That's it! Everyone was giving high fives and cheering. It was a great feeling. It was like, man, <laughs> we've done it. There's something special here. The village drill design is simple. It's straightforward, it's a fraction of the cost. It far surpasses any manual drill, and, and in a lot of respects, even the huge motorized drills. We tested the drill in Africa, and we had phenomenal success, and what we're able to do is find out that this drill works everywhere. The village drill totally comes apart into pieces that can be carried by people or carried in a small truck. We just got back from the Congo where we literally had to put the village drill in a couple of canoes and we paddled for three days up the river system. When we got there, you know, they welcomed us and, uh, you know, they were so happy. We could see the joy in their eyes. For every hour of engineering that was spent by the students, over 1,700 people months of water has been delivered. That's over 144 years for every hour of engineering spent by a BYU student. That's amazing. That's the kind of impact we want to have. When I met these students, they were so sharp and they were truly invested in what we were doing. It's not every day that you can work on a project that has the potential to change the world. And I hope that they never lose sight of what they did during those seven months to develop the drill. But to see that it's impacted hundreds of thousands of people's lives, I and mean, it's really humbling and awe-inspiring. We felt there was inspiration throughout the design process, and the fact that there were families in Africa that were waiting for this drill was a great motivation the whole time. There might be a million people out there that are drinking clean water today because of the work that these engineers did at BYU six years ago. There's more at work here than just us. Open your mind up, open up to the possibilities because these students did just that.